aspect or the foundational aspects of marriage the things that God considers and the reason why God is a part of it because when you go to the altar it's not just you and your wife it is you your wife and the Holy Spirit so the reason why God is part of this institution is what we want to consider here and you are going to see that the things we consider here will be deeper and stronger than what you feel you know in the Western world today and even in Africa People wake up and they say they are tired. They say they don't feel like it anymore. The spirit is not involved because of your feeling. So as far as it's concerned, there's no arrangement like you becoming tired. There's no arrangement like you don't feel like anymore. Because when he entered the transaction, he didn't enter because you felt anything. It is good for you to feel something for the man. It's good for you to feel something for the woman. That is for you who are earthlings. He is coming from a realm yonder. And he doesn't operate from that realm based on emotion. So you can keep your emotions. You can service your emotions. And that's why I salute those who teach people how to service emotion in marriage. It's very important. But you need to understand that in case that emotion is no longer there, marriage continues. Because the reason the Holy Ghost became part of it is not because of your emotions. In the Western world today, when people wake, they wake up and they say, I don't have affection for him anymore. And because they don't have affection anymore, they go and divorce. You are a joker. If you think a spirit that is ancient like the Holy Ghost will come and become part of something and commit himself on the strength of your feelings, you don't know what you are talking about. So there are psychological aspects, there are emotional aspects, there are bodily aspects. In fact, when we are doing marriage counseling, we deal with subjects like expectations in marriage, we deal with subjects like intimacy, we deal with subjects like children and parenting, we deal with subjects like communication, we deal with subjects like conflict resolution, we deal with subjects like personal growth and you know strategies, we deal with subjects like dealing with extended families, we deal with subjects you know like ethics, codes of conduct. All of those things we deal with them when we are doing counseling. But the mysteries of marriage are deeper than that. So this particular meeting is not for such. So I'm not going to tell you how to communicate with the person. I'm trying to leave a disclaimer. I'm not going to tell you how to dress well to win the affection of your husband. It's important for marriage counseling. When we finish here, we can go to marriage counseling. Here, we want to know why marriage is important to God. Why when you enter, you can't back out. And why you have to take caution before you enter. So if you understand this, you will not marry somebody because he's tall. If you understand this, you will not marry somebody because she's dark. If you understand this, you will not marry somebody just because you have emotion. When you understand this, you are going to check deeper things, deeper parameters. Not neglecting these other ones, but you are going to what? Check deeper parameters. So what are the mysteries that undergird this institution called marriage? Number one, the reason God instituted marriage is because marriage is a spiritual gateway for transferring inheritances and ordinations. In Genesis chapter 2 from verse 7, God revealed the only technology that is available in the spirit for imparting life. Genesis 2 7. No other angel knew any other way by which life can be imparted. The only way life can be transferred is when God breathes. That's all angels knew. When God is creating any being, what he does is that he breathes into that being and life enters that being. And so in the college of angels, when you ask them, how is life transferred? They tell you it is transferred through the breath of God. So if God does not breathe into you, there's no way you can be animated. Now when God created the earth realm and he wanted to secure his agenda on the earth, there was need for his program to be transferred from one generation to another generation. And so God needed a new technology of communicating life, not just through his breath anymore. So that as his agenda is being transmitted, because his agenda runs within the economy of life, 
let there be another channel by which life can be communicated so that his agenda can be transferred and so when god created the man he breathed into the man because that was the standard procedure of imparting life now all of a sudden he now discovers if this man needs to transfer this thing and multiply the earth i won't be able to come every day to keep breathing and keep breathing so what i need to do is to establish an institution through which i don't have to breathe but life will still continue so what he did was that he said it's not good for the man to be alone he now entered into the man brought out a rib and formed the woman and from there he created another channel by which life can be communicated so it is through the gateway of marriage that life can be transferred without god breathing so when god wants to create another adam god will not go to the dust he won't need to go into the rib there is something that can happen between the adam and the eve that can produce another life that will be exactly like the first adam on the strength of that adam can be multiplied and god's agenda can be multiplied so the first purpose of marriage from the realm of god is for procreation to take place and in the course of procreation god's agenda can be transmitted this is why with this person part of your agenda for my life because the reason that union we hold a place with God is because there is a heritage that should be transferred. There is an agenda that should be transferred. But you see, today, people don't care about divine agenda anymore. Well, so in fact, there are places where people get married and they say, we don't want children. We just want to love ourselves, live together, and keep ourselves company. Because they think it's all about their emotions. They think it's all about their selves. And so when emotion is no longer working, they cut off and look for another person that they can breathe emotion. But when God was creating this institution, he wanted a channel through which he can transfer agenda. He can transfer purpose. He can transfer ordination. And the only way ordination can be transferred is if life keep being replicated. And marriage became one of the bases through which God can keep replicating life. The reason Jesus can be traced to Abraham is marriage. Now, if Adam did not have the capacity to procreate, then Jesus would have appeared on the street and say, I am Jesus. All of us were wrong. But the reason Jesus did not appear was because God kept marking that track and God kept watching that lineage. And he watched it from Adam, watched it through Abraham, watched it through David, watched it until he came to Joseph. God marked one bloodline from the foundation of the earth until the day Jesus came. So, so long as that gene keeps transferring, there's a possibility for a, a, a divine project to be executed. And that's how it is for every one of us. Everyone who is here today, there was an agenda. And if you go into God's structure in the spirit, there are dimensions that can travel through certain or the true bloodlines. There are dimensions that can travel through certain lineages. That's why even in the Israeli tribe, there is the Judah tribe that can handle scepters. It's not everybody who came out of Jacob that can be a king. It is a Judah that can be a king. And then you have the Issachar that have the right to the prophetic so that they can give direction to Israel because there are certain ordinations that are tied to bloodlines so what God does is that when the time comes for that ordination to be transferred to the next generation God comes upon you and puts a government that now you are about to transfer my ordination to the next dispensation you can't just marry anybody because there are people you marry who don't have that spiritual genetic structure to be able to host a dimension and so you may love them but if you marry them you will truncate a possibility if you marry them you will shut down a spiritual operation if you marry them you will cancel out an agenda so although god respects your feeling god will give you a choice if you want the prophetic to continue in this lineage, you will have to let go of your emotion because I am writing a prophetic code and that code passes through your DNA. And because that code passes through your DNA, there are sacrifices you must make if this lineage must continue. So when you want to marry as a kingdom agent, you will have respect for ordination, not feeling. You know, 
feelings can be built but ordinations are eternal they were crystallized from the studios of heaven you don't have the power to create ordination only god has such powers and so what god will do is that he will ensure that the right combinations come together and it's not just about the gene because in christ we no longer function by biological gene it's also about the capacity through process capacity through training to be able to raise that child in the way of the lord so proverbs 22 verse 6 said train up a child in the way that he should go you will read it and think it's about good character he's not talking about good character in the way that he should go means before you were formed in your mother's womb i knew you i ordained you to be a prophet so there are certain persons that have been trained with the capacity to raise prophets so when you want to marry a woman who does not have the orientation to raise a prophet and it is destined upon you to produce prophet god will say no because if you marry that woman the child will not go in the way that you should go because the utensils for equipping is not with her she was raised in a family where people do what they want everybody is a harlot my brother even if she repents the skill the the capic is not there and so when god considers ordination he will tell you your loins the seed of your loins were numbered from eternity if there's one sacrifice you will make on earth is to marry somebody who can steward it you know when he met jeremiah jeremiah thought he was being creative he said no ordinations are not creativity he said before you were formed your mother's womb i knew you i was the one who occasioned the bonding process that resulted in you and the reason i occasioned it is so that they will have enough skill to teach you how to access god and walk in your ordination did you not read about the patriarchs before anybody came they had encounters in luke chapter 1 from verse 13 to verse 17 the bible said zacharias went into the court to prepare for the service and while he stood the angel appeared to him and told him zacharias <laughs> look at verse 13 let me show you some scriptures you know when we, we when we talk marriage people think it's emotion emotion is secondary we are talking on the nation there are certain hands that must be on deck for a prophet to be born for an, for an apostle to be born for a king to be born there are certain hands there are certain trainings from when the child is infant you need a woman and a man who have the skill to talk life into that child so that mindsets can be formed is it this generation where people wake up with twitter and sleep with twitter that you will just marry carelessly meanwhile you need a mother that when the child when she was is still pregnant she knows when there are movements in her stomach so in the evening she can put her hand and begin to shift the destiny of that child from the womb but that's the kind of woman god needs for the ordination that was written through you and then you say no I, I, somebody is dark and short when your child is one there are wars he needs to hear to modify his dna so that he can align with divine ordinance and you need a woman that has the requisite capacity the patience and the spiritual intelligence to keep teaching those wars teaching those wars so that when that child is seven he will have the capacity to have his first encounter because encounters were written that at the age of seven he will have encounter but he needs discernment and he doesn't have the ability to read a book it's the mother that will read books and talk it into his spirit so that his senses will be sharp to pick the movement of the angel at seven but you see you now marry the mother that is a twitter expert so even when that child is 20 he has not been able to build sensitivity because they, he was not trained in the way that he should go <laughs> i come in the volume of the books it was written about me <laughs> to do We can't charge here. Wait. Look at this scripture. Please sit down. He said, like, But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias. He said, For thy prayers is heard. Because there are certain children that won't come until you have raised prayers. You need prayers. So it's not like you are, it's not that you are buried. You need prayers because you need a spiritual womb to carry that child. So God can wait for five years. If 
the person, the man you married, is not a spiritual man. He will tell you, I'm the only son. My, my, my people need a male child. Meanwhile, what they are saying is that you need a womb that is incubated with priesthood to be able to raise this king in the spirit. But the man is under pressure because his grandfather said they need a boy. And because of that, after five years, the man will come to you and say, you say, we have tried. It's not working. So I've decided to take a second wife. Meanwhile, it was designed that a child will come only after five years because you need enough incubation. He said, Zacharias, he said, your prayers have been heard. He said, thy wife, because even your wife, they know her in the spirit. Thy wife, Elizabeth, shall be with dear thee a son, and you shall call his name John. So you don't give names because you heard, you watch a movie, and you love Nick. So many people who should bear Smith are bearing Bartholomew. People who should be a poor are bearing Nathaniel because they don't even know that even the name carries the signature of the ordination. But how, how can they pick it? They, when they married from emotion, he shall bear the son. His name shall be called John. Do you know the, the dramatic part of this story? He doubted the angel and he became dumb. So he didn't have the opportunity to tell Elizabeth. But the day the child was supposed to be named, elders came. Who thought that children is about this is our lineage, this is our clan, and they started suggesting that the child's name should be Zacharias. Elizabeth stood up and said, No, his name is John. They said, No, 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 nobody in this lineage has borne that name before. He said, No, his name is John. It was why they were arguing that the book of Zachariah opened, and they said, Yes, his name is John. That means Elizabeth was not where this encounter happened. But she had the signature. She too could peep into the destiny of the child. So the reason they qualify to be husband and wife is because both of them can read the destiny of the children that they born. The reason John became a great prophet was because they married correctly. I was preaching in Zambia when God told me my first son will be called Moses. I I wrote it down and left. One month to the time, my wife now was suggesting to me in reverence what I think about the name Moses. I said, what do you say Moses? She said, that's what she heard. I said, now I know you are qualified to be a mother. Because one of the signs that I married correctly is the fact that she was able to pick it. So now, even if I leave my son for my wife alone for 10 years, I won't be afraid. He can fulfill his destiny because he had the power to see and to hear on matters of his ordination. Go and read the Bible. You will find out that all the most of the great men that the Bible took time to write, their mothers had encounters in the spirit. From Samuel, there was an encounter. To Samson, there was an encounter. And that's how it continued. So the reason they are able to steward those destinies and to bet those giants was because they knew their ordination. And so you meet a man who has no power in the spirit. You meet a woman who has no power in the spirit. You are marrying because of shape. It may take another 50 to 100 years before God visits that bloodline again. That's why you come to certain families, darkness will rule for 80 years. Darkness will rule for 100 years because there are no stewards. There are no custodians. Too many dislocations happen. And it will take God 100 years again to begin to connect the, the clan. The clan. It will take time. Because maybe it is great grandchildren of different lines that God will finally go and connect again to realign the design of ordination. Ordinations are born through marriage. Divine heritages are preserved through marriage. That's the first mystery of marriage. And so when God created Adam and Eve, God knew that Jesus would come from there. And he will not just come from anyone. He will come through the one that bets Abraham, through the one that bets David, and through the one that bets Joseph. Because Abraham represents father, David represents king. Jesus must be king and father. And for that to happen, the algorithm must be correct. If they fail, manipulations will happen until it's gotten right. And I wish I had time to show you 
some of the manipulation. I would have used the life of Judah alone to show you how a married gave birth. See, ordinations are dangerous things. They manifest the wisdoms of God. And one of the channels through which they are communicated is through marriage. See, next time somebody approaches you, don't be carried away by those. Go and ask God, is this consistent with your plan? You know the reason why we water down the subject now and teach it based on feeling and psychology is because we know we are not raising spiritual men. We know we are not raising spiritual women. If we tell every member of the church today, marry by discernment, people will marry once in 10 years. Because we know the, the disciples we are raising, they don't hear God. If we, if we know we are raising people who hear God, who are, who, are, who are sensitive to the motions of life, it won't even be a topic to discuss. Because the lady will walk up to you and say, yes, that guy came to me, but when I checked, he was not God now. It won't be a topic to discuss. Everybody will pick frequencies. And if we begin to give birth like that, in a short period of time, we will take over the world. Don't you know that in most of the dark religions today, in places like India, you can't just throw up and say you want to marry. Who married what? They will check the stars in the spirit through astrology. They will check to see if there is alignment. It is on the strength of the agreement of the stars. That's how they will choose even the date of the marriage. And then you are wondering why they are taking over the world. Because they understand the place of spirit on these matters. So when they give birth to children, they can tell you who is king. They can tell you who is prophet. They can tell you who is a businessman. Because they have checked that stars are last. And so they can pick the utterances of the spirit to know what their destinies represent. It's only in Christendom that people you throw up from out of the street and say, I love, love this person's hair. And you are marrying because of hair. Marrying because of leg. Marrying because of buttocks. Marrying because of chest. When God is looking at things that were scripted before the foundations of the world. Because we have raised Kana people who don't have spiritual sensitivity. If you want to get it right, and I'm not, this is not about happiness. So you can marry a man who will take you to Bahamas all your life. But you will raise children that are godless. You will raise children that may end up as swindlers. You will raise children, even if they have money, they will not be relevant in God's agenda. Because there is a distortion in spiritual alignment. It was not consistent to divine plan. God knew why he put you in Africa. And if you are spiritual, everywhere you go will be orchestrated by God so that you will meet that person. That's how God works. Married, the one you have now is God's way. <laughs> but those who are not yet married, <laughs> so don't hear me and say, Kai, could it be that that sister God showed me and I rejected? Is that why I'm having problem in my house now? That problem has its purpose, and I will show you. Anyone you have now, so long as you have gone to the altar. God designed this world such that He will respect your will. You have gone to the altar, that is now God's will for you. So build it by the help of the Holy Ghost, something can still come out of it. <laughs> I wish I had time to tell you my stories. Hmm. Oh, God of mercy. Thank God I married a beautiful wife. But <laughs> the Holy Ghost brought me to a place and I had to agree with Him that. Even if it's a baboon, you show me, I will go ahead. I'm telling you, I'm on the altar, I'm telling you my dialogue with God. Because I had my own specs. You know this idea of... Hey, hey, Mary, uh, see, there are lots of garbages. If you are a spiritual man and you want to fulfill God's purpose, you know there is the perfect way, there is the acceptable way and the good way. Many people will go to heaven with acceptable will. And then they will discover the disalignments they created because they allowed their emotions to lead their lives. Number two, mysteries. The second thing about marriage is where I began to read from. is the mystery of oneness. And I will show you how that mystery works and why God insists on that mystery. Now, the reason I started with the first is because 
if you miss one, the second one will be more difficult. Because God knows your ordination. Now, imagine me, for example. God knew from the before I was born that I will travel and travel and travel and if I have time in my house for one week, it will be a blessing. Imagine if I went and married one fair baby robber lady who wants her husband to put hand on her shoulder, put hand on her waist. They are going to uh, shop together. They are going for holiday together. Anywhere they are going, they are going together. I would have had problems from the first month that will never be resolved. So the God who knew what he wrote about me prepared somebody that had stamina to endure my absence even for one month. Anytime God permits me to come, I've come. And anytime I'm not around, it's part of her destiny. They taught her when she was a child that she will marry a man of God. And that man of God will be all about the father's business. So she grew with that mentality. She grew with that mindset. Although she loves it when we are together. But anytime I'm not around, I'm in the missions. Because I'm married to the Holy Ghost. Imagine if I married somebody who, 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 all her fantasy is that every day they will snap together. They will put online. They will... I'm not even the type of person that you'll see in my personal life anyway. Personal means personal. You will hardly, if you find anything about me anywhere that is personal, somebody got it and put it there without my knowledge. And then you marry somebody who, even if she coughs, is on the internet. You will now be quarreling. They will now come and say, why are you quarreling? She will say, I cough. He didn't allow me to upload it. 